Hello and good morning. It is the day after a night shift here and Ben has literally just woken me up with the words, Annabelle, I need a cloak fit for an epic adventure. And yes, those were his exact words. And so I guess that's what we're doing today. Before starting my quest to make Ben a cloak fit for an epic adventure, first we needed to iron the pattern as it's one I got second hand and honestly I have never actually used it. So the first few pieces I ironed were all ones I didn't need and then we got onto the ones I actually wanted to use and damn these pieces were large, but I suppose it is a full size cloak. Once all the pieces were ironed, me and Ben folded up the tablecloths that I had used for my market stall to cut the main pieces out of, save taking more fabric off the roll. And if you recognise this fabric, it's because it's the same one that I used to make my Lady Loki walking skirt and it is so nice that Ben insisted that he had to have something made of it. We had a lot of green left over and this was cut into large squares for use on another project that I'm going to be doing. Meanwhile, the blue section only just fit the front of the cape, so we did have to get that roll out in order to cut another two pieces for the back. There's a wooden stick in the middle. <laughs> was that annoying you, Ben? Well, it was just getting in the way and it got stuck in the giant pile over there. Ben also thankfully did all of the cutting. It is his cape after all, so he should contribute at least a little to it. And with this last piece all done, we were ready to start with the construction. So who's taking out the pins? Rock, paper, scissors. Go on then, rock, paper, scissors, let's see. No, I'm going to flip a coin this time. I've learned my no, lesson. No, no, rock, paper, scissors. No, I've learned my lesson. Alex, we do rock, paper, scissors. If I beat you two out of three, you get to flip a coin as well. Rock, rock paper, paper, scissors, scissors, scissors shoot. Go. Rock, Rock, paper, paper scissors, scissors, shoot! Okay, suppose I'm taking out the pins. It's like the second time in the, our entire five-year relationship that you've actually won a rock, paper, scissors. I think scissors. it's also the second time it's also been on film. <laughs> You're really not going to help at all? You know this is like your cloak. Yes, but you know what I am going to do? What? Look fashionably dapper when it's finished. Fine. Right, shoo shoo. I need to take pins out. Do you want scissors? I don't think I need scissors quite cool. yet. Cool, I'm off then. So I got to work taking out all the pins before packing away the pattern pieces for the next home we need to make an awesome cape on the fly. When the fabric was at last small stabby stabby free, I then took some stabby stabbies and stabbed them through two layers of the fabric to attach the shoulders and the cape bottoms together. I did this wrong sides facing as I want to French seam all of these and not add a lining as this fabric is really quite stretchy and I don't want it being pulled out of shape and the lining either making that worse or at least a lot more obvious. Ben also pointed out that despite being two completely different colours in person, the camera for some odd and unknown reason seems to see them as nearly the same and the green just doesn't look green, which in all fairness is the same problem that I'd had when making my Loki skirt, but I'd honestly kind of forgotten about it until now. However, do let me know in the comments down below what colours you think these fabrics are as I'm trying to decide if it is just my lens not showing them correctly or just people's different eyes and it's just one of those tricky fabrics that that is a little bit hard to tell. Okay, so this is the back of the cloak pinned and I am loving this shape. What do you think, Ben? I like it, I like the flow of it, but I think that we might have to adjust the length. I do too, because if Ben drops the cloak a second, for one, it sits on the floor and I actually already shortened the cloak once and we were aiming for it to be about mid-calf, so I don't know how tall they think these people are supposed to be, but um, I think you're just short, honey. I think I'm just not six foot, which is... Uh, <laughs> A dream of mine that will just never happen. No, but that's okay. So what we've decided to do is we're going to sew the entire cloak together and then we're going to level out the base to make sure all pieces are the same. So yeah. Do you know what I love about this fabric? What? It doesn't fray. No, it doesn't. No. Perfectly cut. No. It's a seam in sight. I want more of it. But well, I want it in like red and greens. And I'll see what yellows. we can do. And gold. Actually, that'd be really cool. Gold would be a good one. Sitting down, I got to work sewing the first seams wrong side together. Once all four sections of the cape were complete, I then pinned the seams right sides together to make them French. Ooh la la! These were then sewn down, though I fear the lines were a little wobbly due to the stretch of the fabric. And then, because I didn't want the flappy sealed seams floating around, I pinned it up onto the green section of the cape and gave all four sections a very neat top stitch, which honestly came out fantastic, and I believe it will nicely highlight the angle of the two sections sewn together, even more than I originally intended. Okay, so it's about 11 o'clock at night, and all these sections are stitched together very, very nicely, so what I'm going to do quickly before I go to bed, I'm not going to sew them tonight, but I'm just going to quickly pin them together, ready to French seam all the edges tomorrow and well I suppose we can go from there but yeah 
not not going too bad, I have to say. Quite like the look of it. All the lines also got the angle perfect there, so they will line up very, very nicely. But um, yeah, let's get pinning, get this done, and then I'll see you guys in the morning. With that, I got to pinning with just a little help from Sherlock, who of course just had to investigate the project, lay on the pin pot, and then demand what he viewed as a well-deserved belly rub. Which, to be fair, he had let me worm him earlier that day with very little fuss, so of course I had to concede and pet my very soft and fluffy ginger son. It's really such a good thing our hair matches so well. Honestly, no one can tell he's adopted. Okay, so both me and Ben have just gotten up, and it's 11 o'clock, so yeah, you know, maybe stayed up a bit late last night, a little bit more tired than anticipated but it's fine we're going to get this cape done tonight i don't have to go to work for a few more hours so i think we're going to do the hood then we're going to sew the edges of the cape and then hopefully ben will be the home and we can measure it on you right are you still not functioning all right it's 11 p pm it's 11 am and ben is still not functioning apparently but that's okay that's why he has food because food equals functions and i've already had my breakfast so i should get sewing so i started by french seaming the top of the hood foregoing the top stitching here as i don't think i could get both sides even i then took the cloak and trimmed down the french seam side as they didn't look quite right and i'm not making this for me i'm going to be more of a perfectionist than normal only the best for my husband after all. Then I flipped the cloak right sides together and pinned along the stitch lines. It was at this point that I kind of regretted using stretch fabric. I mean, don't get me wrong, it looks utterly amazing, but I did not notice when making the walking skirt how hard this was to sew. But it's fine, it's fine, we can definitely work through this. Well, this is comfy enough that I either need to make myself one or tell Ben that he's not getting his cloak, that he has tasked me with making him. However, one thing is that the neckline is stretchy and that is something we need to fix. So, gonna come up with a plan for that in just a second. But the other thing I wanted to tell you guys is that I know I normally embroider names of my Ko-Fi sponsors onto my projects. I'm not gonna do that with this one because it's not for me. And I feel really, really bad about it because we've had a few donations towards making the lovely sewing machine, which is a uh, currently burrowed behind several boxes. But we will get it fixed. We are nearly there and I will be embroidering them onto the next project, just the next project that I'm actually gonna wear, not that I'm giving to somebody else because I think it's a bit weird to give someone else something with other people's names embroidered with them, whereas I don't particularly mind. So that's going to be a thing and now, to fix the collar. To stop the collar from stretching out of shape, I mocked up a facing from iron-on interfacing and then ironed it onto some leftover green material so that it would look nice. This cape, by the way, is coming out super neat. Again, I reckon it's because I'm making it for someone else, but damn, I am proud of this work. And considering that, if we're being honest, the last thing I made Ben to wear was his Dai Lee cosplay several years ago, which I still say is some of my best work. It just shows I clearly care more about him looking good than I do when I'm making clothes myself. And if you like watching me sew things for Ben, don't forget to like this video so that we might once and for all tackle the algorithm beast into submission. And I know that you guys enjoy seeing my husband have things made for him as well. So I don't know how well you guys can see this, but this is one of the scraps from the collar that I've ironed and this is an with it. If you look, it's actually burnt the fabric, which is good to know. Glad the collar's going to be on the underside. Don't think it's showing up that well on camera. It is noticeable in person though, and it just amuses me slightly that this is why you should always test your fabric, uh, like a swatch of it before you iron it. Luckily, mine's on the inside, so I don't really care if it's slightly different colour, but it is rather amusing. Taking the facing, I stitched on the binding around the outside of it before flipping it over to hide the raw edges and hand stitching it down. And of course, as soon as we bring hand stitching into the situation, it immediately makes this a much bigger project that takes way more time than anticipated. But damn does it always look so good that I just can't help myself. So this is the facing for the cape and oh my gosh, it turned out like so perfectly neat. I'm super, super happy with it. The bottom of it is a little 50-50, but luckily no one's gonna see that, so we don't care. So now I suppose we should get this all pinned onto the cape and then we can stitch and maybe I'll actually get it done today, but we'll see. Pinning the hood, cloak, and facing together was honestly such a pain. The hood just didn't want to line up, so I ended up giving it a few pleats, as well as adding a small gather to either shoulder to fit the cloak to the facing, as I'd already widened the neckline quite a bit. I then stitched it down with a small seam allowance before flipping it over to the right sides together and stitching it with a wider seam allowance. I thought this came out 
really quite nice, which was quite a surprise as this was honestly quite a bulky lump of several layers of fabric. Tacking it on definitely helped stabilise the neckline and I think in the long term will help it keep its shape. And it was at this point that I realised that I might have sewn on the hood the wrong way around. But I also decided that my attachment was so neat that I just did not care and would not unpick it. Okay, so my plan had been to now try the cloak on, trim it down to length because it is a little bit long on Ben. However, he has come home, had lunch, and then left without letting me try it on him, which, you know, that's not the plan, Ben. If you want a cloak, you have to do fittings. It is one of those things. So I'm gonna have to wait till tomorrow because I start work today at the same time he finishes work. And now we need to just figure out what I can do today to get this done as quickly as possible, which I think we're gonna use the scraps of material that I have, oh, that's a bit of a small one, but have left over from when I cut out the cloak to essentially cut out binding to go all around the edge. We're gonna do opposite colored binding compared to the fabric that is on it. So the hood is green, we're gonna have blue binding for that. Bottom of the cloak is blue, so we're gonna have green binding for that. So yeah, that's the plan. Wish me luck. I think I'll be able to get them all cut out. I'm only gonna pin and sew the top bit because obviously I've got to trim the bottom bit to length, so I don't wanna pin and sew stuff and then have to like redo it all. But we'll see how far we get. And fingers crossed we do pretty well with it because it's kind of hoping to get it done today. I always say this, I always think everything's only gonna take a few days and it takes like a week. But yeah, I'd really like to get it done today or tomorrow and just, you know, have it finished because the next project I'm making is for me and I'm rather excited about it and, well, I love making stuff for Ben, but let's be realistic, I look better in my own clothes. <laughs> I'm sorry hun, that was really mean if you're watching this, my apologies, I promise I'll make you lots and lots of clothes as well over the next, like, I don't know, half a dozen years we're married and then after that you can make your own. So I took the blue fabric and marked out one length using my wider ruler this time as the thinner one hadn't really worked for the facing. This was then cut with big scissors because time was running short at this point and then I pinned it around the shoulders and hooded the cape. I then took to the sewing machine to stitch the binding on before sitting down to pin the binding over the raw edges of the hood and finally hand stitching it down. Trying to beat the clock as at this point I had only an hour left before I had to go to work and I still had to get changed. Okay, so good morning. It is about three in the afternoon, but my night shift was a long one, so I've had quite the lie in. And I've got another one tonight, which is even better. I still have the hood to finish. Ben has come back for lunch, and he literally got me out of bed so that I can mark up the cloak to be the right length. So we're going to finish hand stitching because my brain isn't functioning enough to be able to work out the hem of the cloak right this second. And then, once hand stitching is done, we'll cut the bottom of the cloak to length and I'll sew it. And hopefully we can get all the machine sewing today. Hand stitching, I don't think it will happen, but I can finish it tomorrow, it's not a big deal. And then it will just be the clasp and oh my gosh, it's going really well. And I'm so proud of this, it genuinely has turned out so, so perfect. Oh, but no, first before sewing though, we need tea. <sighs> right, now we can start stitching. So I got sewing and as always the hand stitching took absolutely forever but I could finally move on to drawing out the cape base. I first marked where Ben wanted the base of the cape to be which was slightly shorter in the front than the back with the side seams being halfway between the two lengths. Once the marking was done I attempted to fold the cape in at half matching up the markings and drawing a line between them but honestly this was not working out at all and the stretchy fabric was just making this even harder and harder. Ben then suggested that I measure down from the green points which worked out for three of the four seams, the front pieces being the only two that didn't match up, but this was an easy fix. We then laid the cape out and marked the base of where we wanted to cut section by section with chalk. Ben held the metal ruler in a slight curve, making sure either end matched up with the pins and the markings while I used Taylor's chalk to draw the lines. We triple checked everything about five times before I lost in a game of rock, paper, scissors and started cutting the base. I was so, so nervous that it would come out wonky and uneven, so I asked Ben to try it on before I did anything else to make sure that I didn't need to make any more adjustments. Alright, time for the moment of truth. We've trimmed the cape. Ben now needs to try it on and see if we've actually trimmed it evenly. I think that looks pretty much, don't kick the demon teddy, I think that looks pretty much perfect. It certainly looks even, or at least it's even enough that, and you wanted it a bit shorter so that you could easily walk in it, and it's definitely a little bit shorter. Yeah, but it's also a lot lighter. Yeah. No, but, and also, for, and it flows a bit better now. It's because it's not dragging on the floor before yeah. the sides but were extremely long for some reason. All right, well the one thing I have concluded is that we definitely are gonna need some more green binding for those edges. So, you do you want to help me cut that out real quick? 
Yeah, we can see if we can do that. All right. Well, put that to one side and let's... Are you a bat? <laughs> it's so bouncy! This material, I swear to God, look how stretchy I need to make is. myself a dress out of this. I love the skirt I made and now I need to make a dress. <laughs> you look like Zoro. All right, come on, seriously, cape off and let's get cutting binding. On the lay! To that cave! Earlier I had cut out some binding strips, so I started by sewing these three strips together, top stitching the loose seam allowance to keep it neat and tidy. I then pinned what I had onto the cape, and of course it went all the way around except for the last front side, which was very, very annoying, but fine. So I got out some more scrap, cut an extra line before sewing it on and pinning it in place, and of course it turned out to be two centimetres too short, so I went around and repinned everything, gaining exactly three centimetres, giving me the extra two centimetres over edges and a centimetre to fold over for the seam at the top edge of the cape. Phew! <laughs> then it was back to the sewing machine for the last part of machine stitching that was needed for the cloak. Thank god because at this point I was really getting tired. Having said that, I do release new sewing videos every Wednesday, subscribe if you want to see more by the way, and so getting tired with sewing projects can sometimes be just one of those things that we have to deal with and fight through. After that, I got all the edges turned over and pinned before starting to hand stitch. It was at this point that I got distracted by another project which was repairing a pair of vintage Levi jeans, and so this kept getting put off, but I was working hard to keep it going, including sneaking downstairs in the middle of the night to work on it, as when working on this Ben was going away for a while and I really wanted to get it done before he left. Okay, I'm going to sew and talk at the same time because time is currently very, very limited, so I got up and I spent about three hours last night hand stitching the edge of this cloak because Ben is getting on a plane tomorrow, aren't you honey? And he's gonna go see some family and I want this cloak done before he leaves and we want to do the photo shoot like today and it still doesn't even have a buckle which is a little bit annoying, kind of hoping it would be done by now but I'm currently doing uh, paperwork and sewing while Ben is organising his life ready to go on holiday Indeed. So that's going to be interesting and uh, yeah, we'll see how this goes. If you're watching this video, I'm guessing it went rather well. Fingers crossed, anyway. Okay, so in this little envelope right here, I have something that is very, very exciting. Now, I don't know if you guys remember, but a while ago I made a cloak for Loki and I couldn't find a good clasp for it. Well, when me and Emma did the market stall, I went for a wonder and got this baby. So this little puppy is made of metal. I'm not sure what kind of metal, I think it was maybe pewter or something and it was actually handmade and cost me about 15 pound, which for a single buckle is ridiculous. Apparently it is historical accurate to, I think kind of like Vikings, but I've gotta be honest, I was just looking for something pretty, was not paying attention to what time this was from. However, me and Ben have been looking for a buckle for his cloak, and as I haven't sewn this on Loki yet because I'm lazy, I've kind of decided to donate it to the cause and I'll find something else for my cloak eventually when, you know, another market comes along. So we're going to use this, and Ben is going to be very, very grateful. And I don't think he's examined it all that close yet, so we'll see what he thinks. And we carried on hand stitching. At this point, I honestly didn't really think I would get it all done, even when not doing my neatest stitching. Having said that, oh my gosh, it was coming out beautiful. I worked on it every extra minute I had, even taking it with me when we went to dinner with family and kept it on my lap throughout the mill just that as soon as we were done I could pick it back up and carry right on stitching because by god I was going to finish this thing before he went away. Okay so I have been sat upstairs working on that goddamn cloak and normally Lily likes to you know sit up here with me, keep an eye on me, sometimes she'll be on the bed, sometimes she'll be on like one of her cat beds and the thing is I just could not find her. So I walked over here to kind of like, you know, just wondering where she is. She's in the box. Is there a kitten in the box? Yes, there is. Is there a kitten in the box? Yes, there is. Is she very soft and fluffy and incredibly snuggly? Yes, so yes, so yes, so yes, so yes, she is. Meow, meow. Anyway, I'll leave her to go to bed now. To attach the clasp, I placed it halfway up the facing where it would have a firm solid grip. I then took a double thread and stitched each metal loop six times before tying it off. I also made sure to get Ben to give them a good tug to ensure they wouldn't move, as like I said, this clasp is the most expensive part of this project, so it damn well better not fall off. 
And with that, we are done and Ben can finally try on his amazing cloak. The movement on this cloak is beautiful, perfect for the active lifestyle epic adventures often come with. Plus the slightly stretchy fabric gives it a beautiful bounce and just look at Ben Twirl, isn't it gorgeous? Kind of want to make my own now. The slight glittery streaks of fabric also look wonderful, giving it that hint of shimmer and starlight every hero needs, while the clasp honestly looks like something from like Lord of the Rings or something, so very happy that I donated it to the cause. Overall, I would honestly give this project 10 out of 10, but I think Ben better give his opinion as well. What do you think? It's so cool. <laughs> Look how springy it is. This I, fabric's so weird. I need to make myself a dress out of it, honestly. It's so cool. But look at it, the movement's gorgeous. Did you use bias binding for the collar? Um, I used some interfacing just to help it keep its shape, because otherwise it was going to be a bit too stretchy. It's so cool. It's easy to put on as well. Oh my god, it's epic. <laughs> I think we should use this cloak for one of the like Lord of the Rings ring wraiths. I mean, to be honest, if you put a second hood, it's almost creepy the way it moves. <laughs> it's heavy, isn't it? So it's like yeah. you can just... That's so cool. <laughs> now we just need to decide what the rest of the costume is going to look like. So me and Ben thought we'd roast marshmallows today. And this is now how he's sitting in front of the fire because he won't take the cloak off. Hello, Strider. <laughs> Welcome traveller. <laughs> so, what do you think of your cloak? And may well, we see your face? It definitely puts me into character. <laughs> what are you going to use it for? Because we didn't really have see, a specific idea for it, did we? See, I've always wanted the idea, love, sorry, I've always loved the idea of being the mysterious D&D traveller. So essentially I turn up your door with the cloak on, hood up, and I enter the building. At which point I become a very happy, you know, kind of kind, quiet, you know. It's kind of nice. No, but like I said, it definitely puts you into character because you put the hood on just enough to cover your face. Like so. And you can just sweep the cloak in. Just <laughs> watch the flames. And the flames are going very, very well at the moment. Indeed. Oak burns really well. <laughs> well at least we're getting ready to your scrap wood. Indeed. Long into the night we shall gaze into the well, I mean, you definitely uh, did what I asked. Made an awesome cloak. I love the clasp, by the way. It's so cool. I brought that for my Loki cloak, but I think it suits you rather nicely. It suits the fabric really nicely, actually. You know, this kind of style, it's almost like moonlight that's been spun into black. So sparkly. Hello. Hello, doggo. This is not our dog, but he's just hanging around. He's, he's our neighbour's dog, and he's quite cool. But no, I think it came out perfectly. It's some of the best sewing I've ever done. Like, like even said, this it, unintentionally, is so cool. it's pattern match. Like, look, a lot of the lines follow on with each other, and I'm really proud of that. Mm. It's really cool. <laughs> but yes, if you guys want to see more sewing adventures, we will be back next Wednesday. So subscribe, like, and comment of what I should make then next. Anything else, my love? I think the next thing is to build the breastplate and van braces <laughs> that go with the that go with it all. Sounds like a plan to me. Alright, we'll see you guys later. Bye!